great intro. Yeah, Mitch, really excited to have you. So I'm Rob. Hey, guys, uh, for the ones that haven't been on a webinar with us yet, uh, heading up the agency sales team here and ultimately just trying to like make agencies uh, like yourselves uh, more successful with Canopy or if you're not a customer yet, uh, hopefully soon. So uh, the, we're, we're just trying to make a dance uh, and, and try to help. Uh, each agent become uh, a little bit better every day. Uh, I think the big the big thing about getting one percent better every day, uh, if you uh, uh, plot that out, it makes you about a I think about a hundred x better in the year. So let's uh, let's see what we can learn from Mitch today. Uh, so so Mitch, do you want to do a, a quick a quick intro on yourself? Uh, I mean, I, I guess most people know you by name, but would love for you to give a quick a quick intro. Yeah, sure. No, first off, thank you guys for the opportunity. Um, you know me, I think Robert, when we first met, it was like, I, I told you, I said, I, I don't care what, if we, if you guys ever need anything, if you ever just need someone to come and kind of, kind of show and talk about how the different things that I'm doing and that we're doing in our agency, let me know. And, and I think that's the, I guess, to kind of start things off, that that's the most important thing about this industry, guys. And I think you all need to understand that everybody's willing to help each other you know, build those relationships. We're in a relationship game anyways. It's not the first time I've said this um, or not anybody said this actually. So the biggest thing, man, is, is making sure that, making sure that you as an individual are not scared to ask for help and ask for advice, ask for how, how are you doing it this way? How is this agent doing it that way? Everybody's agencies are unique and new and different. So um, if I can just put a little bit of knowledge in your heads today, or, you know, answer any of those questions that maybe you guys are battling. I know, especially young producers who have, who are sitting there trying to think like, you know, I haven't wrote any piece of business yet, or I'm, I'm not writing as much business as I need to. I'm just, you know, I've got a baby face. I look young. Um, you know, I was, I was the same producer that had to work through those things as well. I didn't have a beard beard until two years ago. And the next thing, you know, I look 18 instead of 12. So um, a little bit about myself, uh, a little bit about myself. I've been in the insurance industry almost five years now, uh, coming up this upcoming December. I've got two beautiful uh, little kids. Uh, both are girls, Brooklyn, who will be eight in January in second grade, and Hadley, who just turned four in July. They keep me busy. Um, I, I'm, I come from a big family. I'm one of six, four brothers and a sister. So uh, with that being said, you know, growing up with all boys and then God gives me with these amazing, beautiful, uh, beautiful girls. And it's like, man, this, this is a, this is a little bit different, but, but being able to be a girl dad is probably my most favorite, favorite thing. And is my pride and joy. I'll, I'll, I'll go to bat and do anything for those, those girls. Um, I started, started in the independent insurance agent or independent insurance industry, um, because I got in a car accident totaled my car that had 112,000 miles on it. Didn't know how to go through a claim. I was 21 years old at this time. And then at that, at that, at that, at that point in time, I reached out to one person that I knew that owned an insurance agency and called him. It's actually the agency that I'm at now and plan to be at for, for the longevity of my career until, you know, when I'm able to start growing that, um, and, and, and in other ways, uh, called him, asked him for advice. He walked me through the process and my cliche, you know, I guess, opinion or perspective on what an insurance agent was, uh, was completely wrong. And I, I fell in love with, with the relationship piece of the game. And then two days, three days after that accident, um, I decided I want to sit down and have a talk with him. So I got into the business and here I've been um, almost five years now, which is crazy to think about. Um, I was a telecommunications major. So being a, being in a telecommunications um, side of things and having that degree, I like, you know, I, I missed it. Like I'm selling insurance and I am not doing anything in radio. I'm not doing anything in TV. Um, not doing anything content wise. So the second that, you know, I started opening my mind up to different opportunities with podcasting and local niche podcasting, uh, and then getting the amazing opportunity to have a, have a insurance podcast now, uh, has all just came from the passion that I have for, you know, media in general. So being able to have the family, have the insurance piece, um, you know, and then also be able to still have my little hobby slash something that I've fallen in love with. And it's making, you know, making podcasts, having, having amazing guests on and learning from other agents. I have my show, not only so you guys can learn, I do it so I can learn as well. I have people on my show that I can learn from. I don't know anything. I really don't know everything. And I promise you, I never will. Neither will any of us. That's what makes this industry fun as you continue to learn. So that's a little bit about me kind of get off my soapbox now. Let's see what we can do about, uh, See about making making some changes for some uh, some people who are looking into the real estate or even just trying to finance from up referral partners in general. Nice. No, that's uh, that's amazing, Mitch. That's a uh, great great intro. Uh, clear, clearly, you're like I'm. I'm. Uh, we're, we're switching sides a little bit. Um, you're uh, you're actually getting interviewed this time. Uh, 
for your knowledge. So, but I think that's a, it's a great way to got me nervous. You got me all nervous now. My face is gonna get red. Yeah, I mean, guys, Mitch actually, I'm I'm gonna already spill it, but he even pre- pre- prepared a little presentation. <laughs> guys so i mean uh that's that, that's next uh, next level so now really really uh re- really exciting right so st- maybe like let's start off simple like uh what what like tell tell us more how do you work with uh, with referrals how do you find uh that first referral partner and kind of yeah like t- t- take us through that yeah so i, I that that's a first off uh, a question that gets asked to not just myself, but to many of the colleagues that I know who do this, who kind of follow some of the same progresses or uh, the same processes and, and operations that I go about with making these relationships. Um, everyone, everyone wants that real estate referral. Everybody wants that mortgage referral. Everybody wants that referral from the car, um, that, 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 uh, the car dealership down the street. Everybody wants that, you know, $250,000 commercial property account from the, the, the private bank down the street. We all want the referral, but the thing that we forget to do is what does the referral want from us? What do they need from us? Right. So, so my first two years, when I first got started, man, I tell you what, I I was like, just wheels were turning in mud. I feel like I wasn't going anywhere with it. I feel like I, you know, the, the old cliche portion of the old school of business, you know, it's like, I'm going to send out 300 emails to all these local real estate um, real estate agents and real estate brokers. And, you know, if I get two or three, I'm going to be fine. Not a single one, not a single one. And, and where I'm getting at with this is when I said community in, in, in your counties, one thing, if you're a producer, if you're an agency owner, um, whatever you are in this industry and you have a, maybe a younger agent for an example, Okay, a younger agent, for an example, just started with you and you've got him sitting behind the desk and he's sitting there just, you know, inbound leads are coming in just because whether they're paid leads or whether they've been spent through um, SEO, um, you know, advertising through social media, online, Google, whatever it might be. And he's just sitting there quoting, doing all that. Um, you know, there's there's two things there. One, he's learning a lot of a lot about insurance. He's learning how to quote. He's learning that process, which is extremely important. But the second thing is if you're going to be someone who is a successful producer or successful in anything in your community, what do you think that the number one step is that you got to do? Get involved in the community. Step one, go get involved in the community, right? It, it does not take you much as an agent to dedicate yourself one hour a week or even two hours a week to find two either not-for-profits or you know um, networking groups. For example, I just joined Rotary, the Rotary Club of Greenfield. I'm super, super excited about that, right? But my my perspective going into Rodeo of Greenfield, this you know for the for for this is to actually continue to make a difference and do the community service stuff, um, change people's lives, do the you know go go help set up at an event that we're having to raise money for people um, over in Haiti that we can go do um, you know do do shots to help with the polio and for you know just vaccinations that we get here in America. This group puts together different events and different fundraisers for that. But I'm getting involved to one, because I love giving back to my community. My community gives back to me by being customers for me. The least I can do is go give back and donate my time to my community, which does one thing, is which, which does another thing. It shows your genuine self and it shows the community that you care. I don't know about you. I want to do business with people who care and love the community. I'd rather go get a pair of tennis shoes, and this is just me. Doesn't mean it's for everybody. I'd rather go down to the, the, the local shoe store, McCleary Sporting Goods, and get a pair of Nike running shoes and order them off Amazon or order them off offline. Because I know one thing: I go spend my money there. I know for a fact he donates to the Boys and Girls Club, to the Hope House, the homeless shelter, the soup kitchen. That's what makes the community go around. So putting yourself out there, putting yourself, putting your agents out there to be seen, get them involved one or two things to get involved that don't understand you can't just continue to get involved with what well, you know five or six things because guess what you've only got so much time there's only so much time in the day and you got to do one thing your job is to write insurance and be a salesman you've got to do it go out there make yourself known in the community second thing this is what helped me out and really took me to a different level i started a local podcast it's called the inside hancock county podcast I'm getting ready to start season two with it because I kind of kind of started to get busy in life and didn't go, you know, went about six to 12 months without a couple of episodes. So with that being said, um, the reason the reason why I started that local podcast is so I could interview prospective clients and referral partners. 
letting them come on my show, me interviewing them, letting them talk about their business, about rates, about whatever it is in that current event for them in their industry, had them on the show so that they could share. And in return, I'm like, I'm giving out their information to the public. I'm showcasing them, not talking about insurance on this show. It's all about them and their business. And in return, you now have a very, very big first step into the door of becoming not just a getting a referral, becoming a referral partner with him, right? The one thing too that I learned is if you're going to go into this, you know, you're going to go, you want to interview this local realtor or you want to go buy this realtor coffee and you say, I was wondering if we could refer business back to each other. I can tell you right now, there's going to be little business that you are going to be able to refer back to him then he's going to be able to refer to you. So instead of asking or telling him, I'm going to send you, you know, when someone calls me about real estate, I'm going to refer him to you. No. How about this? How about asking him, what is it that you're struggling with? Or is there anything that I can do to help you? What, what would help you in the process of getting a house sold and or getting a customer in a new house, pre-approved, need insurance, closed payment, everybody's done quicker. Because the, the quicker the process for them, just like us in the insurance industry, the quicker the process for them, what do you think? What do you think? The next one they go to, the next piece of uh, real estate that they, can go, that they can go close, more money in their pocket. You make things go quicker and better for them. They want, they're going to continue to send it because you're the guy who, one, protects them the way they need to be protected. The mortgage broker is, the mortgage broker is going to love it because he can trust you. He can trust you. The second you show trust, you've got to have trust. They've got to have trust in you or you're not going to get the opportunity. But how can I add value as the insurance agent back to the either mortgage or real estate referral partner to get that second opportunity? You need one opportunity. Just like the whole Eminem, Eminem song, right? You got one opportunity, whatever. I'm not a singer, so don't, so don't, <laughs> don't judge me on that. But you do. You get one opportunity with that referral partner. It's your decision whether you're going to fail or, you fail or, fail or succeed. Okay. Step three. Maybe those first two options don't work. This is something that I will share down the road here. If you follow me or um, want to talk outside of this, let me know. I'll, I'll give Robert and we'll talk about my uh, how, how you can book a meeting or whatever with me and we can chat. Um, but something I'm getting ready to launch with all of my referral partners. I've got about 10 total, 10 that are consistently sending me business. I've got my top tier premier referral partners who are sending more and more or sending more than that in the upwards of 10 to 15 to 20 uh, opportunities, warm leads that have directly came to me because he's gotten permission from the, from the buyer or from the customer who needs a mortgage to send me that information, which is a huge key factor in what we're going to discuss and talk about here in a second. But I'm going to be starting some type of, not it may be a rewards, but it's going to be a competition with my referral partners. Each referral partner is going to have its own specific tailored landing page that we'll get into and I'll show you here in a second how it's going to be useful. Own specific tailored landing page that they will submit a request for an insurance, homeowner's insurance quote for a new home buyer or for a refinance customer. Because I have their own tailored landing pages, and that's where they submit. That's not where Joe Schmo submits. That's where they submit. That's where he submits so they can choose whether it's a new home buyer or whether it's refinance. Both of those have different sets of questions. The same exact, and those questions would be the same exact questions or the same exact pieces of data and information on that client that he or she referral partner would be sending over anyways. Name, phone number, date of birth, email address, phone, all of that jazz. So instead of him sending an email, that processor, that mortgage broker sending that email of, hey, I need a quote, closing dates this, mortgage clause is this, here's the real, blah, 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 blah. He can now submit it directly. And it, what that happens is the system will now track how many referrals that referral partner has sent, how many, the, how many that brokerage or that mortgage company had sent, and premium written premium so the contest is going to be in a 12 month span who can refer the most business what that reward is i've got to make sure that it's 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 one um not against any laws or rules or regulations first but my initial thought right now is you know 
getting getting them excited to refer somebody business one, but two, having a reward for SERPs for sending you business. Because like I said, there's not many times that you're going to send them, hey, Johnny wants a new home or need, you know, is looking for a new home. Here it is. Yeah, if it comes up, I'm going to, but it's not going to be as, as much, as many units as they're sending to you to work on the homeowner's insurance quote at that point in time. So being able to have them submit something for me to be able to track what referral partner and the premium is being sent. And at the end of the day, is it goes into an Excel spreadsheet as well. And that Excel spreadsheet, which also is in my CRM now, that Excel spreadsheet will show a line graph and it will show what referral partner has referred how many units and what how much premium. That would be that's that will be a public landing page that all the referral partners can see. So that when when Jake Kersey at MJW Mortgage shares a post on social media that says, oh my, you know, I'm now 10 units ahead, three months left. If you need insurance quote, please use, go to this website link right here. So he's now fighting for that battle, right? I'm fighting to get to the top so I can win that reward. Something like a three or four day trip on, on, on us, on the agency, right? Something to show them we do, we are rewarding you. We appreciate you giving us business, right? That, that is another way to get them engaged, contesting, making them feel, feel like they, they've, they've made a huge impact on your life, both for your book of business, but also financially. Without those referral partners, I can tell you right now, I would have a crappy year, but I wrote this year, I've gained three more referral partners this year within the first four, three or four months. And I've wrote two times the amount of it, two, two times, almost two times the amount of insurance that I wrote last year in total. Boom. Because I've, because I've learned how to take care of my referral partners, right? Don't pick up the phone and send them a long email. It's just like cold calling. Walk in there. They've got a, it, it's harder for them to say no than it is for them to delete an email and say, oh, it's just another insurance agent trying to get my business. What separates you from, from them? Also, when you're talking to these guys or you're wanting to wanting to meet them, everybody's got Facebook. Everybody knows how to hate saying this. Everybody knows how to get on Facebook and do some Facebook stalking and see what types of people they're about to meet with. I know for me, I like to see someone's face before I go and shake their hand. It's just that's how I am. So I'm going to try to find a way. Every time he's at a website, some have me or team. There you go. Boom, bang, bongo. I now know what this guy looks like. And I now know what couple of things that he likes to do. Oh, I saw him that he posted something on Twitter about the Cubs winning. I'm going to bring up something about the Cubs. He's passionate about the Cubs, his family. That's important. Who knows? Guess what? Just something that says mutual friends on Facebook. Maybe they have mutual friends. Maybe your mutual friend that's, that you're closer with can introduce you to that person. Or say, hey, let's go grab a coffee or a cocktail. That's how you do it. You, it's, it's, there's no magical, I'm going to tell you, there's no magical equation to get that referral partner to let you quote a piece of business. You got to be likable. You got to be trustworthy. And you got to be able to execute. Execute. When I say execute, when you get a request for insurance, a request to, for a quote on a new buyer's homeowner's insurance policy, do you think it should be four days by the time that that processor or a mortgage lender gets a quote or even the home buyer gets a quote? No, here's what my rule of thumb is. And this is my big accountability piece. This is my huge accountability piece. Within 24 hours, it's always less, always less, always less. Within 24 hours, you will have that quote back to your customer and you, you as the processor, less than 24 hours. And it's a, you know, what it is, it's a video. It's a video quote. It's a quote summary of why specific coverage limits need, need to, you need to have them. And in the video, it's talking about what escrow is about. I'd say 75% of the clients that I get referred to me have no clue that their homeowner's insurance is paid through escrow. Get it. It's got whatever this, it's got to, it's based off the loan and what the mortgage broker, broker, um, broker is requiring. But when I get that email, that request from the mortgage lender, and it says insurance escrowed, that means it's paid by the mortgage company. When I see that, I make sure that that specific video and that, that quote video includes that their homeowners are just paid through escrow. 
that makes them feel one very comfortable. And honestly, just from, from the beginning, makes them feel like they're saving money. But it explains what escrow is. And I didn't put that copy together. That was a referral partner who helped me put that copy together. I just transcribed it. But that is that's been very helpful. So then what that guy doesn't do, or that the customer doesn't do, he doesn't have to go back to the mortgage broker and ask him what the heck escrow means. He feels he feels as if from the realtor to the mortgage lender to the insurance agent that all cylinders are rolling on one. It feels like they, it is a team. And it feel, and, and by having a, having teamwork with those referral partners, the customer thinks you guys are amazing. What do you think he's going to go do? You're going to ask him, first off, you should ask him for a review after the policy has been bound. That should automatically happen. If you're not asking for reviews, you're, you're, you're wasting time even having a website. Ask for the review. Ask your mortgage partners for a review. But on that, but on that standpoint, Robert, you, you're not going to get these referral partners by just sending bulk emails and marketing email blasts and all that jazz. Start with your local community. Here's another one. I'm just going to throw some more ideas out there. Another idea. Don't know why I never did it. I'm going to say probably just time, horrible time management on my piece, but there shouldn't be, there should be no reason you get that one. We just find that one referral partner. Or find one mortgage broker who's really, really good, that top 1% dude, and say, hey, I've got a weekly email or web blog, vlog, that I send out to all of our customers in our CRM. It's over, come up with a number. It's over, there's over 15,000 contacts in there. We get caught questions constantly. Tell us, you be good at telling a story. We get questions constantly about rates. Where are they going? How are they, you know, is it a good time to sell? Is it a good time to buy is our rates going to come down anytime soon? Our rates going to go up anytime soon? Come up with 25 to 30 questions that are commonly asked questions to a mortgage broker or that people are Googling to find out the answer to their question that they don't want to call that mortgage broker and, and think that immediately they're going to get their, their social security number asked and they're going to get a credit report pulled. Add value to those customers. Add value to your customers. That's how you show that referral partner you're giving back because you want to share his, his story. You want to share his answers, his professional ability, his professional opinion, and you're sharing it with all your customers. Brand, brand it to him. Screw your HRM, screw HRM insurance logo on it. Throw his logo on the top of it. Put a little, you know, put a little X and then put yours by it. It's, do that. It doesn't matter. Show him you're adding value in a marketing way. Every time some one of them shares a you know new listing or post a um, you know congratulations to a new customer, engage in their social, especially on LinkedIn. Everybody, the algorithm on LinkedIn. The more you comment, the more you like, the more of that stuff's relevance come up. It's no different than how TikTok is kind of in a sense, right? Then it can take one second. To make to become TikTok famous or have a have a famous TikTok sound or whatever it is, so different than how we handle business and how we handle insurance, right? Well, go engage in the things that these people are. If if the if the mortgage broker is sponsoring a stuff a truck for uh, school supplies for back to school week, dag on it, go buy a couple couple backpacks and fill them with school supplies and take them and hand them to him and introduce yourself and let him know what you do that that's how it works if no one has seen your face and no one knows your name and you've been doing this for three years and you are sitting here on your the only reason you're on this recall right now should be because you want to become better for your referral partners currently or you want to grow that network then get off the thing get off of here because sitting behind the desk is not going to make it happen it just won't it just truly, truly won't. And I'll go to my grave saying that because you can't show what type of relationship you have with a person through just a Zoom call. You really can't, <laughs> right? Like, That's Robert, right. I know you because we've talked so many times. But Robert, I don't know you. You know, like, how, how is this guy off the phone? You know, we don't see that stuff. But when you can be your true, genuine, authentic self in front of a referral partner and they can be that true, authentic self back, guess what? That's when you've hit home. Be likable. Be likable, um, which leads me, I guess, if you I don't know if you have anything to bounce, bounce off of that, Robert, but. Um, Mitch, I feel like if I'm interrupting you, like the, like your, your, uh, your stream of great thoughts is just going to go out the window. <laughs> just keep, just keep going. I have a couple points, but we'll, we'll handle it later. Go, keep going. Uh, 
Okay. So, so a lot of people, so back, back to when I just went before I kind of got on that tangent down the line there of getting up and getting your, you know, what out of the seat and going knocking on some doors and saying hi to some people, um, you know, one quick more asterisk, I guess, or, or PS to finish that topic. Um, you try to try to be the mayor of your town, try to be the community connector, right? Be the, I think Jeremy powers even said this too. Right. Jeremy and I, this is when Jim and I, Jeremy and I became real kind of close and connected um, is because he's huge community, community driven, right? He's huge community driven. That's, that's things that I like to do. I love being community driven and getting behind my community because guess what? My kids go to school there. It's where my house is at. That's where I work. Community means everything to me and it will always mean everything to me. Try to be the person that Joe Smith whose cousins with Susie Smith, one of your customers calls you and say, Hey, Susie said that you've done a great job. Her renewal went down or renewal went down a couple bucks and she, you got her some more coverage. I'd love to talk to you. Also, do you know, when my, I need a new roof. You know, anybody that has a roof, you know, that's a roofing contractor or, you know, anybody that can uh, fix the fix shoe string or fix the bottom soles of shoes. Yes, I do. I, even if you don't guess what, say, yeah, I do. And find the best one and refer back to her get be that person that can be a resource to anybody even if it has nothing to do with insurance and be okay with it be okay with that um so mortgage broker for example mortgage broker wants to submit a piece of insurance you can pull that powerpoint up robert if you want to here this will be i'll try to make this quick as i possibly here can here we go yeah let's uh, let's go through it with that being said man this this was something i debated on doing quite for 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 quite some time because as a mortgage broker, even a processor, the last thing they want to feel like they have to do is data entry multiple different times again, right? No, oh, I've still got to send this over to somebody or I got to email it to, to them. Automation, you know, just like insurance. There's, there's some types of automation in that on that side of the arena in real estate and mortgage. We've, some of us adopt some types of automation or build out some automation. There's no rhyme or reason. Just like I said, like probably the first couple of sentences is every agency is different. Your makeup's different. So if this doesn't work, it's not going to, it doesn't work, you know, but it's okay to try, ask questions and see if it's a good fit. And, and it, at the end of the day, it benefits and it one, it's profitable for you and your business. Like you, if you're not making profit, you're not making money. I mean, it's just, it's that simple. Does it make sense for us, right? Does this make sense for our customer? Does it make sense for our prospective client? You know, that, that, that build out stick figure who, you know, you're that, that specific ideal customer that's got pinpoint pinpointed numbers on you know age demographic where they live geographically whatever that might be make sure it fits and works for you because if not you could be spending tons and tons of time wasting time on quotes and that lender's sending you vacant dwellings that have a 37 year old roof that you got to write on acv and is twenty two hundred dollars premium and that customer is going to run away <laughs> make sure it's quality business so don't get that twisted right i'm not just writing everything um so it, it, when I'm it's really, really quick. Ahead. I just kind of interrupt you here. Uh, I just want to make sure for people like in the on, on the on the webinar here, just drop your questions in uh, in Q and A, uh, just to make sure that we can uh, also cover those. Uh, but yeah, uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch, keep going. Like how, so, may, maybe really a quick question that I had based on what you were saying, Mitch. Um, do you like how do you get that first referral? So you have that connection. You walked in. You're like, how, how do you make sure that that realtor is actually going to send you anything? How, like, do you follow up? Like, what's kind of your process there? Yes, follow up's huge. I'm a big follow up guy. Follow up is massive. Follow up is massive. If he says, you know, if, if you asked him whether that was on a date of coffee or, you know, if it just ran past him and, you know, ask him how the business is going, he says, oh, good. I had a couple of closings. Like, hey, hey, if you wouldn't mind, and even if, if you're new, this is the best excuse. This is the best excuse if you're new. Hey, I've been in the insurance business for a couple of years. I'm working on some processes and I'm, I'm working on, um, you know, I'm, I'm working on becoming better at, you know, become making quicker quotes. Do you mind if your next client, you mind if I quote, you know, whether he's got an insurance agent or not, you, know, you mind if I quote it and put together a, a quote and see what I can, you know, to, and present it to you and tell me what you think. Give me some feedback. Make him be the nice. coach. Yeah, Make him be great. the trainer, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can, it's okay to ask that, but if you get the opportunity, Right. If you get that opportunity and you have it and he says, yes, I'm going to send you something. And two weeks go by and he hasn't sent anything to you. And a month goes by even after two weeks goes by, I would hope before two weeks, 
day after or two days after you send him a nice email or text message, even better, my favorite thing to do is write a handwritten note to that guy. Hey, it was super nice meeting you at the toy drive or at the at the school supply drive. Dude, I'm super proud of you for doing what you're doing. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help get involved. Thanks, Mitch Gibson. Put a you know business card in there, mail it to him. Bingo. He now has remembered you. That's two touches within two days. Yep. Right? Doesn't send you anything for two weeks. I'm either going to pick up the phone, pick up the call, or pick up the phone and call him, or I'm going to shoot him another text. Or if I'm in the area, I'm more than likely probably going to walk in and I'm going to say, Hey, how's business? You, you wrote anything? Are you, uh, you got any new offers out? Yeah, I actually have a couple. Of, I thought you said you're going to send me that new one. Make him feel bad, right? Just put that kind of put it on him. I thought you were going to send it to me. He might have forgot. I mean, it's, it's, you know, people do forget, but you've got to stay on top of them or they're not going to send it to you. No. Right? I like, I like that. I like that. The ideas for those touches, like it's it's all about uh, staying top of mind, right? So, and that's, that's it. That's, and that's with the whole gamifying. I, I really like that idea. Like ultimately, like that's that. I mean, that's probably what you do with your kids too, right? So it's like it's ultimately, <laughs> yeah. You, you need to make it happen. So, all right. So walk us through what you got here and and how you kind of like how like a referral partner would actually uh, like submit with you. Sure. So there's three different tiers here, right? So. Uh, Realistically, every broker site is going to have this layout because there's a lot of real estate agents and mortgage brokers that work together. Like, for example, I've got a referral partner, a um, or real estate agent who I'd say 95% of his houses sold or bought. He's used that, used the same exact mortgage broker, right? Yeah. So yeah, their connection is real tight. Yeah. Their connection is real, real tight. So, so they use the same link. They'll use the same link when it help with storage, right? I mean, it's there's 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 some technology pieces behind this that that make it make sense, but um, they'll be able to select what specific referral partner's name that they are, right? Yep. So, mortgage broker got an offer on a house, got a got a pre approval out, and now the next thing is to get evidence of insurance. B once you've gotten to that point where you are, you know, you've got a great relationship with that referral partner, you're getting them, you're, you're getting them consistently, you're getting them consistently. You need to do one thing. Make sure the process works for him. Don't demand him to do it some way. If he doesn't want to do it, yep. you're not going to stay because the second you say, no, I need, okay, to submit something, I need you to put it here. The reason why there's custom pages for different partners is because they like, may like to do it a different way. And it's okay. I've spent a little extra time on this, right, to make sure it's tailored specifically to the way that they want to submit it to me and how they're currently sending it now, right? Um, so, for an example, Susie gets more or, you know, wants to – needs a needs a homeowner's insurance quote. Um, she got a – you know, she, she has her current homeowner's, homeowner's insurance through State Farm. He sent in a quote and a mortgage broker saw that it was probably too high because sometimes sometimes they might have their own insurance company. And they're not always when they get to that certain step in that mortgage processors checklist of items to do. And number seven being get an insurance quote. Or, or the question is, if, you know, would you like an in, do you get an insurance quote check and then they've got to click the button to shop to get a couple more quotes. Once yep. that's checked in his process, it automatically triggers their system and their processor to this landing page. Nice. Right? So it'll trigger to this landing page and they'll click mortgage broker, right? Because they're the one filling this out. If you want to click on that, Robert, you can. So now that mortgage broker specifically has two questions to answer. Or he's got he's got a he's got a question he needs to select. Is it a refinance customer? If it's a refinance customer, you can go ahead and you can go ahead and click on that. It's yep. gonna ask some specific questions on a refinance. And this is and if you look, it says refinance customer quote request form mortgage broker because it's coming from the mortgage broker. So if you scroll down, Robert, yeah, it's just some generic questions. The first four questions are everything I need to quote the insurance for the house or for the yep. refinance. It shows closing date or approximate closing date and keep yep. scrolling yep. down. And it shows the name of mortgage broker, mortgage e-calls and loan number. And then it's got, can you continue down? Continue, continue. Good. 
So when they hit submit, Boom. when they hit submit, okay, should I, it goes should I in tons of tons of places. Have to come back. It's not going to work because I have required fields on purpose so yes. that no matter who inputs it, it's it's getting submitted in, right? Yes. So that being said, uh, do you, you might have went off of it a little bit, but they hit submit. When they hit submit, the mortgage broker gets a copy of what was submitted. My CSR gets a copy of what was submitted. It automatically goes into my CRM. It gets put into a spreadsheet that shows it, it's my prospect spreadsheet, which goes hand in hand with the CRM. It helps me out with contacts and help for my own my own side, I put it in a different personal CRM, but that's why I have the spreadsheet. Um, then it'll go nice. to my CRM and it'll trigger. It'll trigger an email immediately when that but his submit button is, is is queued. And that submit button, once it, I, I saw somebody's down here, I use HubSpot. Once it's submitted, and it'll take, HubSpot takes the email. Well, it's actually a Zapier integration in between my website and HubSpot. Zapier will take the email from the submission form and will immediately trigger an automated email to the client saying we have received a request from mortgage broker mortgage company blah blah whoever it is it'll be mm -hmm. specifically tailored um wanted to let you know and show you what the process is and what to expect next so i'm letting them know we're working on it we'll have it done in 24 hours and here's what to expect next and it's we'll quote it We'll send you, we'll put it with all of our carriers. We will send, um, within 24 hours, we'll email you back a copy of it. Once we go over it, which I'll send the video quote, once we go over it, if you have any more questions and want to book a call, let's set up a call and we'll go through that quote line by line. Step five, once you've approved the quote and you want to move forward with it, which is I try to get done within 48 hours. So tw first 24, Boom. get the quote done. Second mm -hmm. 24, Make sure I get an answer because what I don't want, Robert, what I can't have is I can't have the mortgage broker or the processor, the processor waiting yes. for, for he's waiting for one thing, one to show that the replacement cost covers the, covers the uh, price of the loan and he yep. wants to make sure it's covered. He needs the premium. Yes. So that they can do what they can finalize closing documents, get the closing table, close the loan, move on to the next one. Nice. The quicker we can react for them. Yep the better it's going to be. And they're going to feel the, the amount of times I've probably, probably did 35 in the last two months for this one specific dude. Every time, man, thank you. I can't believe how fast I got this back. Yep. And here's yep. the funny thing. Some of you have comparative raters. I don't, I don't, if I did, it'd be dangerous. And that's my, that's a step coming down the next road step, here. Right? Next step. That's a step coming down the road here, but I'm still a true, true believer. I'm still a true believer in the personal connection piece with the agent and the customer and the consumer. Um, and I will always be that way. You heard me. I'm about my community and about people knowing who I am, knowing about the specific agent, agency, what they're about. That needs to happen. Robert, can we go back to the spreadsheet? Yes, I'll go back, I'll back here. Uh, by, by the way, Mitch, uh, we've got, got some questions on some of the, the technology you're sure. using. I, I hope that Charles McDade is still on here because uh, this is a lot with, with Zapier. It sounds like you're using HubSpot. Uh, what, what do you use for video proposals and, and CRM? Just really quick. Uh, well, I'm using, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm basic. Uh, I'm, I, when it's expenses, can when you get into the tech piece, right? You start working on your tech stack, things can be expensive. Of course. Um, yeah. You know, for the longest time, for the longest time, me, you know, young punk Mitch and not really no one, you know, in my office, knowing what I'm truly was capable of, it was hard for me to go say, hey, we need this piece of tech. We need that piece of tech. So I've actually learned, I've learned just to go the basic free route with some things and Loom being one of them, man. Yep. You can take, the, you can record and screen record on a Loom video. Yeah. Go through the quote, copy that link, paste that link or embed, excuse me, embed that link in an email. Yep. And it's you it's your to templated go. email so nice. i i like the taking time for a video proposal because it gives them that personal connection right yep. it gives them that personal connection and they feel they feel like you're adding value to them because it's not it's not just like it's an, a marketing email being sent to 600 clients yep it shows yep. the quote we go through the quote they answer whether or not they want to move forward with it if they do or and or they have questions there's specific steps and actions that are that should tell them in that email um but Here's here is my favorite favorite piece. 
if you go to that next slide, Robert, oh, you're, next. you're good. You're good. Stay there. Open yes. this, open this page up right here. This, this right. right here is, is, is a game save game changer for me. Here we go. Yes. And I love Zapier. I, I, I love Zapier. And if I'm talking a little bit to technology for you, you know, listeners out there, like I said, it, it, I'm an open book. I'd be more than happy to sit down and spend time with you. Um, I, I designate a specific day of the week to, you know, consult and, 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 and I guess in the sense, talk and hang out with people around town, community, community partners, um, whatever that might be. So I've got, I've got some time built out for that. Um, so if you go to that new, if you're on that submission form, this is only, this is only for me, my CSRs. It's only for in, in agency use only. Okay. So yeah. for example, Susie, who I just quoted, quoted for center of the video quote on her home, she says, yes, I want to go with a policy with you. All I have to do, because like I told you, what happens when that submission is put from the mortgage company? It does what? It sets up a new customer in my CRM. Okay. It sets a new customer up in my CRM. So now how I have my CRM set up, all I have to go, do is go change the client from prospect to active. Once it changes it to active, Zapier takes so it went in Zap or went in HubSpot one way. Guess what? It's going to come back out of HubSpot. Yep. It comes back out of HubSpot and will go to this form of a new client submission form. Right. And this is only going to show. So if you scroll down. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It'll say lines of business. Yes. And it go. says home. It'll automatically say home. Right. When I change them to active because it came in as a prospect for a homeowner's insurance quote. Once it's, once it's, um, they put home in there, we, we put home in there, effective date status. If you go down to premium, this is my there favorite you thing. There you remember, go. um, no, this is going to be, this is going to be a ne the next form. So I apologize about that. Once this is all filled back out again, it'll update everything in the system. It'll send an updated, updated client to my, to my CSR. She'll be able to upload that into the agency management system, not the CRM, into the, into the agency management system because she now has everything she needs to set up the billing accounts and all that jazz inside of our agency management system where bookkeeping has taken place. So right. with, with the funnel of one thing from the, uh, from the mortgage broker, I have, my, I have my information, everything I need to quote in the places that it needs to be right? Without even typing an email. Yep. Without even typing an email. I want you to, I want you to go to, um, is, so I'm showing the third one right now, the new prospect submission. Yes. So this is okay. I'm glad you went to this one. This is the one I wanted you to go to. Nice. So the new prospect submission form is the same thing. It's either like, just like the new business or new client submission form. This is either filled out by myself or anybody in the office CSR. So one thing that the reason why I created this piece is was I was tired of coming, you know, going to an appointment, coming back and having pieces of paper on my desk. Yep. AMS 360, a Vertifor product. So I was tired of coming back from an appointment and having two or three quote requests on 11 and a half by eight and a half paper with name, email address, phone number, not even anything else that I need to quote. What do I have to do now? I've got to pick up the phone call, get all the questions that I need, ask them this, that, and the other. I, I, I don't seem organized to the customer. The customer's immediate immediate opinion is they're not organized. Why would I want to be insured with this customer or with, with this company? Yep. It, I wouldn't want to be, right? More so all this stuff is for your appearance and make sure that they show that you guys are sharp individuals as agents. So now when a phone rings and Susie calls for a, home quote or she was referred for an auto quote whatever it is anything inbound for a quote request on a phone that's okay. taken by our csr or myself this has to be filled out and submitted before we hang up the phone right so if you scroll up it is yep. the same questions as the new client okay yeah. line of business lines of business what what are you looking for home auto great if they just select home okay if they just select home and you, they said they needed the quote by, let's say, it's due, it's due, you can keep it on whatever, just do, yeah. you can do home and auto. Uh, quote needed by Nine. current policy premium, ask them. The reason why it's not ready, because some people don't like sharing, but it's okay, Robert. It's okay if they don't share, because this next, these next couple of questions are going to get them, 
referral <laughs> partners. Anyway, anybody specific refer you over to us? No, yeah, Jay Kersey did. All right, great. Are you are, and say, you know, reiterate, are you still interested in auto insurance quote? Yes, I am. Great. They hit yes. Go ahead and click the button yes. Yeah. It'll say nice. oh yeah, yeah. Nice. immediately. What it does is it triggers and that's some copy. That's some copy for the so down below it shows, you know, if if yes, blah blah blah. That's for the CSR so they know what they're saying and they're they're yeah. making sure that they transcribe and say it back. That's not the specific script that they will say, right? But as long as they hit yes or they answer yes on the phone. Because remember, this is filled out by the CSR, not the customer. And do you have an online account? Yes. Boom. Once they hit submit, okay, and Robert and I talked about this yesterday. I, I'm right now being able to get away with it um, because we're only getting about five to seven call-ins a day. And it's not like, you know, it's it's not a big drowning factor. And I, I, I have the availability to be able to do this next step. But once they hit submit, Guess where it's going to go? It's going to go into the spreadsheet. It's going to go to Tina, my CSR. It's going to go into my CRM as a prospect. It's going to show line of business, quote effect, or quote needed date. Do you need this quote by any, by any specific time? If yeah. they say no, just, you know, as soon as possible, be great. We're going to, the CSR is going to put tomorrow. It'll be a 24 hour, same thing, 24 hour rule. Got to get this quote back 24 hours. That's, yeah. that's the rule of thumb. Um, it automatically triggered the CRM to send me a to do and a notification to quote Susie Smith's home and auto policy or whatever it is. Well, not only does it send it to that, it then Zapier Zapier is triggered if do you have an online account is answered. Zapier is triggered, and when what that does is it automatically triggers a text message. All right. Okay. When All I say right. automatically triggers, that's the missing piece right now. So right now, how I'm doing it is it'll go into Zapier. Zapier will pull the phone number. Zapier will pull the phone number. It'll take the texting script inside of Canopy Connect. So I just copied and pasted that script and link. Put it in what they call it's called Tulio, and it's a texting free. It's a, it's a texting platform that you pay per text message. So I've been trialing this. Well, now I'm ready to. Um, you know, hopefully here in the next next couple of weeks, be able to have our texting platform and or um, something trigger canopy to send out that text for us automatically. Um, so once that's hit submitted and they say, yes, they have an online account, it's going to text them the canopy connect link. So guess what? I don't care what premium if they didn't answer the question, the premium piece, because guess what? It's going to send them here. It's going to send them here because they said they have an online account. Notice how notice how i didn't use import my insurance on this link this specific link yep yep i use the word compare my insurance because realistically you're not lying to them you're there to compare their insurance to your insurance quotes yep so once they go into canopy and they follow that three-step seamless process and they submit it guess what I've got deck pages. I've got premium. I got driver's license information. I've got phone number. I've got it all. I now have everything I need to quote that customer, right? Once I quote that customer and they say, yep, same thing, video proposal sent to them, whatever it might be. CRM gets checked off as an active customer. It immediately sends them a welcome email. Once they have been changed into active status, it triggers HubSpot to send out an email to that specific client welcoming them to HRM insurance services and what to expect of information packet about the agency, things we do in the community, um, how to submit a change request form, how to add a new vehicle to the policy. I know there's things out there, you know, other tech out there and, and whatnot that people use on the back end, whether it's apps or whoever it might be, you know, uh, we're, we're not at that level as far as as far as the tech stack goes. Like I said, we're pretty hybrid still at this point in time. But this has eliminated double entry. One, it's triggered a way for us to text the customer who was requiring a quote. So once we hit submit on that new prospect quote tier, it's greatness because we don't have to, we don't have to ask them any more questions at that point in time. The next time we talk is going to be within 24 hours when I send you a video proposal of your quote and we beat it by 200 bucks because I see every single coverage that you have. When I have deck pages, people, when you get the deck pages, if you can't beat it, the carries you have are just must not be, must not be competitive with that specific target client. 
or you just didn't work hard enough on it. It's there. There's ways to do that, right? So that's why that relationship piece is even more, even more effective because you do a quick turnaround within 48 hours, you've got a coded policy because you promised them without within 24 hours, they'd have it. You think they're not going to go tell their friends and family and post it on Facebook. And then two weeks after when they receive that email or that when they receive that letter in the mail that says, thank you so much for your person, you know, for your business. And it's personally noted and signed by me. You think that doesn't win. You're wrong. Like that, that's the stuff that wins, right? What happens after the business is wrote? What happens after the business is wrote? You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's that's the stuff that we have as agents have to do a better job of. We always think about what kind of tech and stuff can we do for our, you know, for the clients? What type of automation can we do? A lot of people automate their quoting with raters and a lot of people automate a lot. A lot of people automate um, the onboarding piece. Yep. Guess what? I want to see you. I want to quote it for you because I, it, we all know quoting something ourselves, you know, yes, do we have other agents to help quote it and help do that? And we can review those. Yes. That being able to do that on a large level eventually is my main is, is my goal. Right. But until then you still, you still have to have that personal connection with that specific agent. So, um, you know, it, it, what I've got, what, what kind of, kind of to make it kind of wrap all this up for you, Robert is even the mortgage broker, so when that, when that mortgage broker, you know, when I send that quote of that referral from the mortgage broker and they get submit that video proposal and they say, yes, I want to issue this policy. And I go into AM or I go into my uh, CRM and I change them from, from prospect to active and it puts the effective date. The effective date is also the closing date, meaning that it's going to trigger an email on that specific date of closing and send them a congratulations on closing. At the end of the day, like six o'clock, yeah. seven o'clock, hope, hope closing went well. Maybe it's a video of me. Sometimes I'll change it up. Those are the things that your clients want to hear. You know, oh my gosh, Mitch, remember it was closing day. Well, yeah, I did because I got paid today, right? Like we, we should remember that stuff. Um, we should build those relationships. Uh, but everything funnels. I don't like sending people to fill out a form all the time. I, I can't stand it because yeah. I mean, I hate when someone yeah. says, hey, fill this form out for me. Right? I'm not filling it out. <laughs> I don't like doing oh, that, right? No. Uh, and there are agencies and there are there are companies out in the world that that if someone's not willing, for example, Luis, Luis Leal, if someone's not willing to fill out a, a web form link, he is determined that they're not the right client for him. That's okay. That's how that's how they do things. And he does yeah. a damn good job of it. Does a damn okay. good job of it, right? But for me, but for me, yeah, I'm hungry. and want to continue to write business, and I'll, I'll take you know that guy who no, wants me to get I, an email. I, I love you know. I, I love that, that. Mitch, I think you got to be real. That, I think that's the main takeaway. Uh, maybe, maybe Ray, you have some as well. But I think the, the main takeaway is like work with referral partners, like solve a business problem for them. I yeah. think there, there, there's a reason why realtors and mortgage brokers are so close, right, and loan officers because they need to close that that sale as soon as possible. You need to be uh, unblocking them as much as possible. So I think that's the key. Plus, do business the way that they want to do business. So, if they if they want to send out, uh, if they want to fill out the form, that's great. If they want to give you your phone number, they call into you. You have another process for that. So, I think that's that's the hey, that's, that's the key exactly part. that. Stop. You just hold on. I want to reiterate that one more time? If they say no, they don't have an online account, right? Or they say, you know, I don't want to tell you what my premium is. Well, that's via email or you send them a link and say, I don't want to fill this out. Well, guess what? Pick up the phone and fill the damn format while you're on the phone with them. It's the same thing. Just ask the question, yeah. fill it out. Because once it funnels in there, it goes to the places that it needs to go to. And that's the important piece. I'll leave this, I'll I'll, I'll leave this this portion of our talk here and then we can open up some questions if you want. But the, yeah, no, the, the think, lead yeah, point. Go ahead, Mitch. The, no, the the lead point that I was kind of kind of trying to try to get at with this whole thing is knowing that knowing that my business or that we our t- we, we are we are getting rid of the opportunity of not getting the information one two csr not putting it in the agency management system the way it's supposed to and three is it even in the agency management system right is it even in the agency management system example this morning this is perfect this morning i get an email from my commercial line csr commercial lines and it's Subject line is um, evidence of insurance request, and it showed two people's the first and first and second named insured. Opened up the opened up the uh, word document. It's from 
the, whoever the mortgage company was, blah, 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 blah. It was a refi. It was a change of, uh, uh, mortgage e clause, change of mortgage e clause. She emails it to me and says, Hey, is this your customer? I haven't, I have not heard of them before. I haven't seen it anywhere. I just want to make sure I didn't miss something. I said, not mine. I looked immediately, went to CRM because if it, if it was in the CRM, it's been done. I've done it. Like it's, it's in there. And I'll remember it because I, 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 I'm very fine tuned with my customer base. Right comes to find out it was another agent in our office who did not follow that step, who did not take the time to take the 30 seconds to put in the name, phone number, email address, date of birth, so that when they call and look, we look it up or try to get the change of, you know, or, or we get the change of, uh, change of mortgage e clause endorsement and we don't have anything in the system. How are we supposed to work? That, that's the that's simple a one that, that that's simple 101 like that goes in the management system but the reason why these have been implemented is because we've had some issues with that in the past and i'm done dealing with it i'm done dealing with it on my yeah. own standpoint i'm tired i don't want to get an email back from my csr saying what's john's date of birth damn it i should have sent that to you i now i don't have any, there's no excuse because you can't submit a piece of new business without that it's required it is required based off of this form also, do they want a home quote? Do they want an auto quote? What do they want? If they if they want an auto quote and they don't have an online account, guess what? They get emailed on me immediately upon that submission form. And in that email, it says, if you have an online account, I would like to create an online account for me to compare your insurance. And it's got the canopy link. And if they don't, then the second one is a list about this big. I could send them a form, a list about this big that would probably be transformed into one with what I would need to quote the auto. And that that's kind of a way that says, hey, they're either going to fill it out if they really want to do business with you, or if they don't, it's okay with you because it's going to save you time. That person is going to probably take more time to do business with because they don't, they're not engaged enough with their certain with the specific policies. They don't, they don't have an along login, an online account. They probably don't even know what a deck page is. Right. Those clients are a little bit more tough to work with. But at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's, you've got to figure out a way to uh, you've got to figure out a way to get it done. Make it work. Yeah, no, I think. And also, I, I like want to reiterate, like, I think it's all about process in the end, like even your example here. Right. So uh, I think that's uh, that, that's just key thing for what I see most agencies and agency owners struggle with. It's just like make sure the process is right and the rest will follow. And then obviously. Ken, if you can help there. So uh, question from Sean, uh, what, what CRM do you use? I think your AMS is uh, AMS 360 from Verta4. Uh, do you, what CRM do you use? AMS three, yeah, the AMS is Verta4 through AMS 360. Um, I use HubSpot. I will tell you, if you got Hogsoft, if you've got, um, if you've got Hogsoft, I'm assuming the only reason, the only reason I use uh, HubSpot is because we don't, I don't have, and we don't use Verta4's CRM. I think there's, they have QQ or something like that. Um, that's my, my website does not, my web forms and my Zapier does not integrate with Vertifor. So I'm, if you've yeah. done any type of tech work or whatnot, Vertifor, if you're not a Vertifor customer, you can only use Vertifor products unless. Yeah. No, but they, 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 have, past I mean, they, they have integration works. They have, they have agency zoom now as well, which should probably help. So, that's, um, that's it. Right. So if you've got yeah. those, it's going it to, you would, you would eliminate two steps that I use. I just use those additional two steps so that makes sure that it gets into places that it needs and CRM and AMS. That's the only reason yeah. why I do that. If not, you eliminate both of them. It goes right into Vertifor and AMS 360 and you're done, right? But I don't have that avenue yet built out. So this right. is a way to do it in a cheaper, more, I guess, uh, harder Good, man. way. I, 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 love that you're, I love that you're just using exactly and some Excel sheets, the spreadsheets. It's, it's just, you, it. you need to get started somewhere and, and it works. So uh, that's awesome. Uh, I, I don't think we have any more questions. Uh, like maybe last call for anybody having questions for Mitch here. Uh, but he's always happy to connect uh, one on one with the, with anyone here uh, as well. Uh, I think like a, a last little plug for Canopy, uh, just uh, for for anybody working with referral partners. Uh, another way that that our customers are using it are it is just yes. setting up a link. It's setting up a link directly for them, right? So uh, instead of having them fill out the form, they just email the loan officer, the mortgage broker. They they just send out 
a Canopy Connect link branded with their logo. Maybe you want to even do a custom logo where you have like a little image with your HRM logo and then the uh, and then the mortgage company, right? And 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 for people that are going through a refi, people going through a deal house, like they're used to already giving you the information. I went through it this this year myself. So I would fill this out and without uh, without thinking about it twice. So and then. Mitch is already going to end up with the deck pages even before filling out any form. So just a, a little plug here, but uh, this is uh, th- this real, great. real quick, Robert, thanks, real quick, Robert, the, the reason real quick, real quick, real quick. The reason, the reason why I don't send that can send the canopy connect link to the mortgage brokers customer from the beginning. Yeah. Like when there's steps to I was telling you about the steps, step seven is, yeah. Yes. Get an insurance quote, right? Yep. The reason yep. why I don't like like when they say they want to get an insurance quote and they hit yes, I'm okay with using it on a refinance. But the new home buyer piece, maybe it's a new house. So when they yep. log in, yep. that homeowner's insurance that you see on there is going to be irrelevant. Yeah, you might yep. get the auto, but maybe they don't maybe they don't have an online account with their auto carrier or whatever it might be, right? So yep. streamlining the sh- about said shit. But I said it again, the streamlining, the shit that is smooth, that, that, that makes sense to the customer getting or receiving yep. it. Yep. Right? No, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's perfect. We got it all. So yeah, you hit it right on the head. Boom. All right. Uh, all right, Ray, I think we can, uh, we can wrap it up. Yes. And by the way, everybody watching, we're, uh, of course, we're going to send out the recording. So uh, check back on that later today or tomorrow. We'll, we'll have that out. So, so you guys can kind of uh, look at what, uh, what Mitch is doing in more, in more depth there. Absolutely. If you guys need to connect with me at all, just talk, if you go to MitchGibson.com, go to contact, you can book a book a uh, meeting with me and you can see what days that you can you can book and bring some questions. Let's uh let's make make, make nice. it happen. I, I can learn from you guys as well. Or you have an idea, let's let's build something. It'd be cool. Yeah, awesome. All right. So so Mitch, enjoy the enjoy the rest of the mastermind there. Say hi to the guys there. Uh also uh JD, uh quick we had a quick question about canopy for, for any tech uh, questions, you can just email support as use canopy.com and they'll be uh the Ellie and our team will be happy to help out or you just chat in through the through the dashboard. So we'll we'll get that squared away. Um all right, guys. Um thanks everyone. Uh we even went over a little bit. Uh really, uh really thanks so much for the time, Mitch. And uh have a, a great rest of the day and week, everyone. Oh, absolutely, brother. Love you guys all. Always remember you can make a difference any day. Have a good one. Awesome. Day. See you guys.